kind of you're asking? The walking example, no? Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, see if you've completed, let us start with impulse now. Now, what is impulse? Impulse is also force only. Whenever we are talking about impulse, impulse is also a force. It's just that this is the force which acts for a very short duration of time. So, uh, impulse, like uh, two examples which I've written, when a bat strikes a ball. So, when the ball comes and it hits the bat, that is for a very short duration, right? Or if we are striking a nail with the help of hammer, then what happens? That force which is applied on the hammer, on the nail, through the hammer, is for a very short duration of time, right? So we say in such cases that this is impulse, the force which is acting for a very short duration of time. So even if you see the graph here, there is no force initially, zero from the origin. At one duration of time, it increases so much. And then for a very short duration, this time, this delta T is a very short duration, right? So the force increases and then decreases so this means it's a variable force because it is see increasing increasing and in this time only it is decreasing also so it means the value is changing so what exactly is the definition of impulse that you have to remember it is the total impulse uh, impact of impulsive force it is the product of average force and Time of contact means impulse is equal to force multiplied to time. Here, what are the, the meaning of these symbols? I stands for impulse. Impulse means this impulsive force. So it's actually a force only. F means force. P means time. But what time? Time of contact. From here, if you are asked to write about the force, that is I divided by T. Impulse divided by time. Uh, see this, this I'll discuss later. First, write it down from here.
นอนเป็นสกรูนะ
all right uh, so see forces average force which we have studied in the last class was rate of change of momentum from the newton's uh, second law there only we had derived this portion remember uh, f is equal to ma from this equation only we had derived this so uh, force is equal to rate of change of momentum that is dp over dt so delta p is the change in momentum and delta t is the time duration so i is equal to f into t that is the force multiplied to the time right now if we put this i is equal to dp over dt and here we already have time so this is this is getting cancelled so basically impulse is the change in momentum which you can calculate as final momentum minus initial momentum because it's over a duration of time and for a particular duration of time we have average force as well so that's why this gets cancelled and direction is also same as that of the force so what will be the si unit c force is newton time is seconds so newton into seconds write this page as well
see uh in the first part you have to calculate the impulse and see the uh, ball is first coming with the velocity 10 meter per second and then getting rebounded so see the duration for which the ball has tried this wall that gives us the imp impulse force impulsive force so see firstly we have to calculate for impulse if you do not know the force one quantity which you know is momentum at least you can calculate the momentum that will also help you give you the answer so for momentum p1 is equal to mass into velocity mass is 5 kg velocity this is 10 meter per second now see one we have to choose positive other we have to choose negative because of sign convention let me take uh, right side as positive and left side will become negative right so this is 5 into 10 which is equal to 50 kg meter per second uh, second momentum that is p2 this one m into v this is 5 into minus 10. This is minus 10, which is minus 50. Do not write, uh, write anything. So this is P1 and P2. Now see, impulse is what? P2 minus P1. That is the difference which we are calculating. So impulse is minus 50 minus, see minus 50 is P2. And this is minus and this is P1. So this becomes minus 100 kg meter per second. Same SI unit, same direction. So 10, uh, 10 answer is wrong. First, Zainab and Shaima, answers are incorrect. Second part. If the time of contact is 0 0.2 seconds, now you have to calculate the average force. Impulse is minus 100. Time is 0 0.2 seconds. You have to calculate the average force. So see, I is equal to F into T. So force we have to calculate. So force from here will be impulse by time. So minus 100 by 0 0.2, 2 will go. So 500 minus 500 Newton. Right. Okay. Yes. Minus 500. Write it down. One more question. We will see.
Uh, C, uh, Shaima, yes. Here we have to calculate the impulse. So impulse is change in momentum. So first momentum is 10 into 550. And since this is in the opposite direction, this momentum is minus 50. So when you take the difference P2 minus T1, that becomes minus 50 minus 50, that is minus 100. Right? First part is clear, Shaima? Okay. Yes, ma'am. In the second part, F is equal to IT is the formula. Time is given. Impulse you've calculated in the first part. So just substitute it there. You will get the value of force.
Uh, see, it says that a ball of mass m with a speed v strikes a wall and rebounds with the same speed. Calculate impulse imparted to the ball. See, uh, here we have the velocity at a particular angle. The velocity is not straight like the previous question. So here you have to break the components of the velocity. Like look here, if I have this, then this is theta. So this will also be theta. So here I will get V cos theta and here I will get V sine theta, right? If this is the case, then velocity, this is theta, this will also be theta. So this becomes V cos theta and perpendicular one, this becomes V sine theta. Fine, now I have two components here as well. So we have to solve everything along X axis separately and Y axis. So final momentum minus initial momentum along X axis, this also we'll have to solve it separately. So let's say um, left, I am again taking it as negative. Fine. So right will be positive. So what shall I get now? See, it will be M minus V cos theta minus, then again P1. P1 is again MV cos theta. First minus V cos theta is due to the direction, left direction. And then, th then this is due to the right hand side plus mv cos theta, right? So minus is this, p2 is m minus mv cos theta, this is mv cos theta. So this becomes minus mv cos theta minus mv cos theta. So this becomes minus 2 mv cos theta. Answer just MV. Uh, see, this is along IX. I'll tell you then a bit. Along IY, have a look. See, we need impulse along Y axis also. So P2 minus P1 along Y axis too. Right, class? Now see. Let's take one direction here also. Let's take downward as positive. Let's take downward as positive. Then upwards will be negative. So V sine theta, V sine theta, both are positive over here. So first one will become M V sine theta minus. Both are in the same direction. So this is also positive M V sine theta. Understood? See, since both the components of Y axis, that is the sine theta component, they are acting in the downwards direction. So, th therefore, we can take their angle as same, not angle, their values as same. So, mv sin theta, mv sin theta cancelled. So, i, y is equal to 0. So, whenever you have two quantities, net quantity is calculated by i, x plus i, y. So, i, y is straight away 0. i net is equal to minus 2 mv cos theta. So this is the final answer, all those who are answering. I am repeating. See, we have to resolve the components because this is not along x-axis and y-axis. We have to solve everything along x-axis and y-axis. Fine. So v cos theta, v sin theta, v cos theta, v sin theta. Both are in opposite direction. So while subtracting, they get added up since they are in the same direction. So v sin theta minus v sin theta gives us 0. If you still not understood, please let me know in the chat column. This is the last question from this topic. We'll do now the other topic.
we have to resolve because velocity is a vector quantity and all these quantities are vectors. So if you have quantities which are vectors, you have to resolve them for solving. So resolution of vectors applies, which we have studied. Minus 2mv cos theta, see mv cos theta, mi see minus mv cos theta, minus mv cos theta. What is minus 1, minus 1? It's minus 2. So same thing over here, Zainab.
just just wait a second class just wait for one minute Okay, class, let's start with frictional force now. Or uh, wait, let us just start with uh, pulley mass system first. Because then uh, FBD and uh, free body diagram and all these topics will be over. See, for pulley mass system, you have to understand that uh, basically whatever forces you have studied, those will be applied. Just one more force will be coming into action, which is tension. Tension is a force which we have not studied till yet. Tension is basically a force that acts in a uh, rope or strings, pin ropes or strings. Basically, it is that force. So force uh, and its direction is always away from the body. So tension will be used in this chapter and uh, tension will be introduced here only. So this is what is meant by tension. Tension means that the it's the force. It's basically a force only and that force is acting in a direction away from the body like normal reaction which i was telling but it this is a force which will be acting on very very thin thin strings or ropes so see uh, in pulley mass system one force that will be acting you have to write all the forces which you can see like if there is a string attached here to this block m and uh, the rope is passing over the pulley and the other end, the other free end is now attached to another block, which is mass M2. So M1 is attached to a rope, which is being uh, passed through a pulley and it goes down to M2. And this entire pulley mass system is hung over the ceiling, right? Now, a tension will be acting away from this and a tension will be acting away from this. Now, see, this is the same string which I have used. This string is going here and then here. So it's the same string over here. That's why the tension will be the same. Tension is same if row or string is the same. So if row or string is the same, then we use same tension. If these were two different strings, then I would have used T1 and T2. Right now, there is no use of putting this as T1 and T2. Now, one more force, which is the gravitational force. Gravitational force always acts downwards. That will be acting. Now, one thing I'll tell you. You know F is equal to MA through Newton's third law, which we have studied. That F is equal to MA. Now in this, our acceleration here is acceleration due to gravity because this is pulling. This is due to pulling of earth. So F is equal to mg. This becomes the formula. So now look here. This becomes m1g downwards 
and here this becomes m2 g downwards so this is downwards this is going upwards tension is pulling it up upwards this is acting downwards fine this is the forces that we have drawn on this all right now suppose let's say um, this will be provided in the question this body is going up so acceleration will be up and this body is coming down so its acceleration will be down so how do you write down the formula suppose i you have the masses with you you know the acceleration due to gravity and you just have to find out tension or acceleration now how will we solve it further what we do we draw a free body diagram what is meant by a free body diagram see free body diagram fbd means you just take the object and draw all the forces which are acting suppose i am talking about block m1 and then there is block m2 so i have separated it from the system right now see upwards tension is acting downwards m1 g is acting this is my free body diagram of m1 if there was any other force which was acting suppose frictional force was acting viscous force was acting any other force buoyant force was acting then we would have drawn that for force also here but right now since two forces are acting in that direction i'll draw it and here also i'll draw the same tension above m2 g below here we know the acceleration is going above and here we know the acceleration is going down now remember one thing direction of acceleration is always taken positive forces acting in the direction of acceleration are taken positive and other forces are take which are in opposite direction are taken in negative f net is mass of body into acceleration now i'll tell you what is meant by this suppose the acceleration is upwards so for us here upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative whatever is the direction of acceleration that is the direction of the other forces all right whatever is the direction of acceleration we take it as positive so see here it means what are the forces which are acting upwards in this first figure this is the first figure this is the second figure in this first figure only tension is acting upwards right so here we will have i'm talking about the first block only first block so tension is acting upwards so t is positive now look here m1g is acting downwards so it will be negative minus m1g and what have i told you this entire this is exactly what this is the force net force upward force minus downward force so what is the force equal to mass into acceleration so that is my first equation which i'll be using like look look at the second block so it will be a revision where are the forces acting towards acceleration downwards so are here this time our downwards will be positive in this case our downwards will be positive why because acceleration is acting down right so m2g will be positive and t will be negative this time clear class so see here m2g will be negative a positive minus tension which is equal to mass into acceleration this is our second equation this is how we solve the equations and get the answer write it down we will see some questions through that it will become clear write it first
first block and second block, yes, NFC. Tension was acting in upwards direction and wherever is acceleration, we take the direction as positive. So tension became positive minus mg. Why minus? Because this is negative now. It is in the opposite direction to that of acceleration. You will not see up, down or anything. You will just see acceleration. Wherever acceleration is directed, that direction will be positive. So see, basically this is the net force, right? This is the net force. Tension minus M1G, this is the net force. Net force is equal to mass of the body into acceleration of the system, right? So T minus M1G is equal to M1A. In second block, now acceleration is acting downwards because the block is going down. So acceleration will also act down. So M2G becomes positive this time, downward force, and now tension becomes negative. So this is plus and this is minus. All right, is equal to M2, 